on today's Techno Babble. Setting up your projector. This is Tech No Babble, your weekly source for church video and graphics news, perspectives, tips, and tricks. And now here's your host, Paul Clifford. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of Techno Babble. This is the show where every week I tell you all about using video and graphic design in your church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host. I'd love for you to ask your questions, by the way, so just do that below the video. If you're listening to the audio, that's no problem at all. Just leave me a, um, a question or a comment by dropping me a line, paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com, or heading over to Twitter. I'm Paul Allen Cliff, that's P-A-U-L-A-L-A-N-C-L-I-F. So I've been doing some freelancing, I mentioned that last week, and I have been amazed how much time and care I spend into setting up projectors when people order them and how little time and care the people that bring their own projectors put into setting them up. So I thought that I'd give you some things to look for and some features that will make it easier for you to do this. So the first thing I want to talk about is focus. Focus is super important, and depending on how good your eyesight is, you know, once it's corrected, if you wear glasses like I do, unfortunately, um, you may or may not need a second opinion on the focus. So if you run into a state where people go, you know, that doesn't look quite focused, just pay attention to that and get a second opinion. Next, make sure your image fills the screen. This is actually the thing that prompted this. I have seen more than once people just bring in a projector, they zoom it out all the way, it doesn't fill the screen, they say, good enough, and they move on. Now, I'm not talking about they have a widescreen projector and the screen is 4x3, or they have a, um, a wide screen and the projector is 4x3. I'm not talking about that situation. I'm talking about whichever way it goes, they've got a border of unprojected screen material all the way around, and that really bugs me. Uh, the easiest way to deal with that, by the way, is just moving the projector farther from the screen, but I've seen it more than once. So there's that issue as well. Also, keystoning. Now, Keystoning happens when the projector is shooting up at the screen, and in that case, you will get a wider image at the bottom than at the top. Keystone. Um, if the projector is shooting down on the screen, you get the opposite. If the projector is too off to one side, you'll uh, get a wider keystone on one side than the other and vice versa. So I might be remembering the way that it looks incorrectly, but what matters is that you correct for this so that it doesn't look like a cheap overhead projector from the 70s. If you're part of my generation, if you're in your late 30s, early 40s, you probably saw overhead projectors in use and they were always keystoned and it always annoyed me. So that's something to do. Uh, finally, preventing error messages. More than once I've seen dirty filter or change lamp or service lamp or whatever. What you want to do in your church is you want to avoid these error messages. And they can be avoided just by doing good maintenance. So cleaning the filter every once in a while. Even if it's not time to change the lamp yet, clean the filter every few months that will extend the life of your lamp because more air will get through and it'll keep it from getting too hot and exploding. Uh, it'll keep it from having a problem with being too hot and causing the projector to shut itself down during service, had that happen. And um, it will, uh, with the lamp, always order a lamp a little before you need it. So if it says 
2,000 hours, plan on changing that bad boy out at 1,800. You'll still have a couple hundred hours, but it's better to have a lamp with 200 hours to spare in storage for emergencies than to have a lamp that is um, long in the tooth and it quits halfway through service. So just keep that in mind. Now, to fix these problems, here are some helpful features for you to look at. The first one, by the way, is less intuitive to most people. Most people want to turn this off, but I'm telling you, this is your friend. When you first set up a projector, make sure you leave the blue screen on. What do I mean by the blue screen? Well, in most projectors, there's a feature where the screen starts out blue. Now, you might think that that's just a generic thing and turn that off. No, no, that is actually to help you. That shows all of the area that the projector is projecting to, so you can use that as a guide to fill up the screen. So, I don't turn off the blue screen. Now, if you've already turned it off and it's a big uh, trouble to get that back on, just use your worship software to put a test pattern up even if you have to get a test pattern off the internet and make a slide with it, that would be fine. PowerPoint could do that for that matter. But use that as a guide for where your projector is shooting and use that as you're adjusting it. The My favorite feature right now as I'm setting up these temporary installs of projectors is corner pinning. ProPresenter can do that, but a lot of projectors themselves can. And this is really great, because basically you've got four corners on your screen. Wouldn't it be great to say, well, the corner is right there, right there, right there, and right there. Well, that's it's what 11 the corner feature does on these projectors. So you can do that, and that way you don't have to get perfect on the keystone. You don't have to get perfect on the zoom, you just zoom out until it bleeds off the edge, at least in a little bit, and then you go through the key, uh, the corner pinning. If you don't have that, then you get really good at um, zooming the projector, moving the projector in and out, refocusing, and then turning it to um, make sure that you don't have the keystone off one de direction or the other, um, trucking it left and right. If it were a camera, that's what we would call it, left and right, so that the image isn't off-center, etc. So that's the alternative to the corner pinning feature. Again, keystone correction, this is something that most projectors have, and that enables them to deal with the fact if they're too low or too high, but they've been propped up or tilted down to compensate that uh, the part of the image that's closer to the projector is going to be smaller than the part of the image that's farther from the projector. So you can compensate with that with the keystone correction. So you would use that in that situation. Lens shift. Lens shift is your friend. If you're in a situation where the projector's too low or too high and it's just a little bit, no problem. You use the lens shift if your projector has it and you can move the actual lens and that in turn moves the actual image. So it really enables you to do some uh, really good things. Next, motorized lenses. There are some projectors where you change the lens with uh, just by turning the barrel on the lens. That's fine, but if this is going to be up somewhere high, that's not fun. So what I really recommend is a motorized lens because then you can control it remotely and you can change the focus, change the zoom, and oftentimes a motorized lens will also have lens shift so that you can get the image exactly where you want it. Finally, this is kind of a bonus feature that is just so nice to have. If you're doing all this with an IR remote, it's just hard because usually you're far, far away from it. A much better way to deal with this is to 
do this with either a wired remote or with a network controlled interface. Either way, the result's the same. You have a good, solid connection to the projector to change the features out. And that will help you get a better image and be less distracting for the message. I hope that helped you, and I hope that you can use these things to remove distractions at your church. If you like this content, please head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S, and there you can pick up some free church tech gifts and a copy of my email newsletter where I give you more tips and tricks and let you know some of the great stuff that's happening around Trinity Digital Media. If, by the way, you like this stuff and you're thinking, man, I wish you could get more in-depth, Paul. I wish that there was uh, a course or a book or something that you've written. Well, guess what? There are courses and books that I've written. So head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash store. My intent in this is to give you time back and to make you more effective. I don't believe that you have to choose between... Um, quick, free, or high quality. With the right training and knowledge, you can get all three. So you can get very inexpensive, very high quality, and do it very quickly if you know what you're doing. So that's why I'm trying to help you out with these resources. Until next time, go out and change eternity. This is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com. Digital Media.com.